Welcome to the Retro Movie Review, your weekly fix of Geekorama. Two geeks will compete in a two-minute movie rant-off, and the loser will suffer the button of doom. So now it's time to bring out the geeks. Geek number one is Clive. And geek number two is Chris. And they'll be ranting to avoid something like this. And this. <laughs> this week our geeks will be going full tilt over They Might Be Giants. George C. Scott is millionaire Justin Playfair, who's retreated into a fantasy world after the death of his wife. Convinced he's Sherlock Holmes, he spends his time trying to track down his nemesis Moriarty. When the conveniently named psychiatrist Dr Mildred Watson, played by Joanne Woodward, tries to help him, he takes her on a whimsical adventure across New York. Written by James Goldman, the 1971 romantic comedy is based on his play of the same name takes its title from the Spanish novel Don Quixote. When he saw windmills, the mentally unstable Quixote thought they might be giants. The movie was co-produced by Woodward's husband, Paul Newman, and the musical scores by John Barry, the man behind the James Bond theme tune. American alternative rock group They Might Be Giants named themselves after the film. Their 1990 hit, Birdhouse in Your Soul, is really good. <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it, They Might Be Giants is brilliant. It's complex, moving and tightly written. The characters have real depth and it works on several levels. At face value, it's a charming and often incredibly touching romantic comedy. But there are plenty of comments on American life lurking beneath the surface. If your cockles aren't worn by this movie, there's something wrong with you. Well, the only level I saw was its feeble attempt at a modern fairy tale, chasing a balloon of childish wonderment before getting hopelessly lost in the woods of poor production values. Terry Gilliam's The Fish King explored the same territory in a far more entertaining way. This desperately tries to be thought-provoking, but the only thought it provoked in me was an overwhelming desire to stop watching it. The end could not come soon The Fisher soon King enough. was released 20 years later, and it did more than explore the same territory. It's practically a remake. Gillingham swiped the story and even the same New York locations. And They Might Be Giants has the huge advantage of not having Robin Williams in it. It questions what it means to be insane in an unpatronising and profound way a full four years before one flew It had me questioning why I wasted an hour and a half of my life watching it. And it's incredibly patronising, especially George C. Scott's sanitised, cleaned up version of a man suffering from a nervous breakdown. Woodward is just plain irritating and there's a cameo by the world's most stupid policeman. Creating a fable does not excuse loose plot ends, shoddy stunt work and poor editing. The support To get cast- bogged down in the technical shortcomings of this movie is to completely miss the beauty of it. It's a weird and wonderful tale that demands the audience think for themselves. The two leads have great fun effortlessly bouncing off each other as they portray a proper adult romance. The parade of misfits in the final scenes manages to be both hilariously slapstick and achingly poignant. The, the lead script- spent all their time being sickeningly kooky and wistful and completely failed to resolve the central dilemma of Playfair's madness. Is he mad? Is he sane? Is he Sherlock Holmes? Are you Sherlock Holmes? Am I Sherlock Holmes? Do we care? No. Rubbish fighting, no suspense, a bizarre ending, perfunctory lighting, cheap sets, cheaper costumes, even cheap... At my signal, unleash hell. This has been the Retro Movie Review. Thanks for watching. Ta-ra!